Welcome to Master Math. Today we're going to talk about the volume of composite solids. Solids. No, I didn't say salad, although a composite solid is a little bit like a salad. In a salad you combine several ingredients to make a meal. A composite solid is also a combination, but instead of tomatoes, you may be using prisms or cones or pyramids. Well, I know the value of a salad, but what's the value of being able to determine the volume of a composite solid? Well, let's say your job required you to figure out how much water it was going to take to fill up this swimming pool. That looks a little challenging. Now, you probably want to know how many gallons of water, and if you could figure out the volume in cubic feet of this pool and convert it to gallons, then you'd know how many gallons it took. Fortunately, it's easy to figure out the volume of one gallon of water. It's 7.48 cubic feet. But now how do I figure out the volume of this pool? Well, first I know I'd need dimensions, and I could get those pretty easily. I'd also need to know the depth because this is a three-dimensional figure. But I could get that pretty easily too. This pool is 10 feet deep throughout. Now I could figure out the volume, right? Well, maybe not, because I, I don't have a formula for an odd shaped prism like that. That's a weird shape. I, I, I think I'm lost. I'm stuck. No, wait. I could maybe break it up into components. I could divide it into sections. And if I did that, I'd have a rectangular prism there. I'd have a rectangular prism there. I'd have a triangular prism there. And that little sliver at the top would also be a triangular prism. And then I could calculate the volume of each of those sections. That big section is really a nice easy prism. And it's got a length and a breadth and a height and I could calculate the volume that's in that section. I could do the same with that rectangular prism. I could do the same with this triangular prism and I could do the same with that last little triangular prism. And then I could add up each of those volumes, divide it by 7.48 cubic feet to convert it into gallons, and I'd know how many gallons were in this swimming pool. Well, that's a lot of work. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. But we're going to look at some easier ones. Let's look at an example. I've got a composite figure on the left, and I can see that it's a cylinder with a cone sitting on top of it. If I were to calculate the volume of the cone, and then add to that, the volume of the cylinder, I'd have the volume of the composite figure. Well, let's tackle the cone first. The volume of a cone is one-third times the area of the base times the height. One-third times the area of the base times the height. Well, now I need to just plug in the numbers I know. I know the one-third the area of the base is pi r squared. The radius of the cone is the same as the radius of the cylinder, or 5 inches. And the height is 12 inches. So the volume of the cone ends up being 314.15 cubic inches. How about the cylinder? Volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, or 3.14 times 5 squared times 12, or 942.45 cubic inches. Now all i got to do is add those two numbers together. 314.15 plus 942.45 equals 1,256.6 cubic inches. 
Well, this one's a little bit different. In this one, we've got a cylinder, a larger cylinder, and there's been a smaller cylinder cut out of the middle of it. And we're asked to calculate the volume of what remains after they cut out the smaller cylinder from the middle of the larger one. They've kind of created a pipe here, haven't they? So what we've got to do is figure out the volume of the larger cylinder if there were no circle cut out of it or no cylinder cut out of it and then we have to subtract the volume of the smaller cylinder. The formula for a cylinder is pi r squared h so the volume of the larger cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height or 13,564.8 cubic centimeters. The smaller cylinder has the same formula, pi r squared h, but the radius is different. It's only 8 inches. And the smaller cylinder's volume then is 6,028.8 cubic centimeters. Now, to calculate the volume of the composite figure, I need to subtract the smaller cylinder from the larger cylinder. And I come up with 7,518 cubic centimeters. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. All right, I've got a mailbox, and the first thing I got to do is to decompose it. And I can see a prism at the at the base of it, at the bottom. And I can see half of a cylinder at the top. So if I were to get the volume of half of this cylinder plus the volume of the prism at the base and add those two together, I'd have the volume of the mailbox. Well, the volume of the semi-cylinder, or half a cylinder, would be one-half the volume of a cylinder. And the formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. And I know what pi is, and I know what my radius is, and I know what my height is. So when I multiply those out, I get 276.32 cubic inches. Now let's do the prism. Volume of a prism is the base times the width times the height. The base is 6, the width is 5, and the height is 11. So the volume of the prism is 330 cubic inches. Now I just got to add those two numbers together and when I do I get 606.32 cubic inches. Well this composite solid is a rectangular prism with a triangular prism sitting on top of it. And I could tell that because I've got two parallel bases on either side. You can't see that one, but they're both going to be triangles. So it's a triangular prism. Now I need to get the volume of the rectangular prism and add it to the volume of the triangular prism. The volume of the triangular prism is the area of the base times the height. The base is one-half times 25 times 70 and the height is 85. So the volume of the triangular prism is 74,375 cubic centimeters. Now for the rectangular prism. That's 70 times 85 times 180. The base times the width times the height. And that equals 1,071,000 cubic centimeters. Now all that's left to do is add those two numbers together. And I get 1,145,375 
cubic centimeters. Well, that's our lesson on the volume of composite solids. It's really kind of easy. If you figured out how to get the uh, surface area of composite solids, the volume of composite solids is going to be even easier because all you got to do is calculate the volume. Now let's test your knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on volume of composite solids. After you've done the worksheet, go back to Master Math and try the quiz on the volume of composite solids. Well, I hope you learned something and had a decent time. Come back and see us again soon.